This letter is from my mom to me. Dear Chris, hello, sweetheart. I really miss you a lot. 15-year-old Chris is facing another giant crossroad. His long absent mother is offering him a home. If you want to, you could come live with me. I'm living in a lake house. I hope this is the real her. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm just waiting and hoping that she does come through. Right now, in my mind, it's 50-50 chance, whether she'll stick around or not. I think her heart's in the right place, and I think that she definitely loves Chris and wants to be there for him, but I also realize that she's a former addict, and that lifestyle can suck her back in pretty quick. A state investigation found the abuse allegations against Chris's father, Dennis, unsubstantiated. Still stung by the accusation, Dennis doesn't want to see his son. Therapist Mike Cook must break the news to Chris. He doesn't feel like he's ready to face you. It hurts really bad, doesn't it? I want to cry so bad, because I'm hurt. Mm -hmm. I feel disowned. I feel like I'm not wanted by my father. Now, after months of therapy, it's decided. Chris will go live with his mother. I love it. I can't wait till I get home. A stunning blow to the woman who raised him, his grandmother. I'm frustrated. Might as well tell you that now, because I know your mother. I'm wanting you to get on the right track and live a good life. And with her, you never will. Chris recognizes that a prison gym is not the right place for such a life-altering conversation. So instead, a private therapy session. I love you, you're just like you're my mom. You're always gonna be my mother figure. All I can say is if you go with her, you're gonna end up somewhere else. Chris has learned how to stand his ground, explaining to his grandma what he needs. This is a big, big risk, and I'm willing to take that risk. Because I don't feel like I know myself without the pieces and parts of my life put together. As Chris prepares to leave Waverly, a familiar face is back, Dylan, in this time for burglary. What keeps tripping you up on the outside? When I get out, I don't have too many people to turn to or anything. Like, I have Waverly, I can always call Waverly. Not always. Dylan will soon be 17. Clock's running on you a little bit, too. Yeah. You age out, and then you'll be susceptible to the big boy system. Yeah, this is my last chance. And there's no place like Waverly on the adult side. That's true. <laughs> This time, Dylan says he has better motivation. His new baby daughter, Emily. How old is she? She's eight days old. Wow. So how does it change your outlook this time around? It changes everything. It's not about me anymore. I ain't going out there to hang out with friends. I'm going out there to be with my daughter and work because she needs the money. How often do you look at this picture? Every night. What do you tell her? I love her, and I'll be out there with her soon. No, I'm sorry I can't be with her right now. Remember Jacob? He's returned from his 12-day stay at a mental hospital after threatening suicide. For nearly a month, Jacob has not been allowed contact with his mother because of the allegations he made that she physically abused him. The charges unsubstantiated, and now Jacob is eager to call her. Hey, Mom. It's Jacob. Are you mad at me? They said we're going to have all contact back now. They wanted to know, and they kept asking me questions about it. So I told them, and I told them it hasn't happened for a long time, so they don't have to worry about it. But his mom refuses to talk to him. And just like that, Jacob goes from calm to combustible. I don't care. Jacob, you want to check in for us, please? <laughs> The bond to a parent, no matter how frayed, is hard to sever. You mad at me because I told about the abuse? Yeah. She didn't want to accept it, and she kept denying it, and then I told her that dad knows too, and she says she, I don't care. I know it's hard, but you did the right thing, okay? For the first time, Jacob is able to pull himself back from the brink. Well, I can feel myself getting more in control over my actions, over my feelings, and my mouth. 
What's the best hope for him? He's just holding on to so much. But I do believe that if he got to a point to where he could be open about that, I believe he would be okay. What these boys are getting is a last chance at hope, an opportunity to turn their lives around and regain a piece of their lost childhood.